if Clariline is working correctly, you should have already retrieved the first reading assignment from this course, which is the following page, page number 5, section 2, figure 1 of the F18A technology reference manual. We are actually going to subdivide this block diagram into several individual presentations. For such a simple computer with only 32 instructions, there's a great deal of meat here and you should understand precisely how each part of it works. Right now we're going to look at the memory subsystem, which is in the diagram scattered in several places because we're showing all the data paths and all the registers. But follow in the diagram as we hit the high points of the components here. There is a 64-word ROM, 18 bits wide. Each node has ROM code. The contents of the ROM code is present and available for you to inspect in source form in the uh, Arrayforth distribution. Each node has a different or appropriate ROM content specific to its position in the array. For example, those nodes with bootable I.O. pins will have boot code in their ROM. Uh, the analog nodes have special code, and so on. The 64 words of ROM are supplemented by 64 words of RAM, read-write static memory, which belongs to the node to which it's attached, and no other node. Again, the RAM is 18 bits wide. There are 64 words total of this RAM. The address for a memory operation, fetch or store, must come from one of three registers. P, which functions as the program counter in a typical computer. P always is incremented after each fetch or each store using that register as the source of the address. A is a general purpose 18-bit register which may be read or written and which may be used as the address for a fetch or store operation. A may be optionally incremented at the end of each fetch or store operation or not depending on which opcode you select to perform the read or write operation. B is a limited size special purpose register used only for addressing. B is no more bits wide than are necessary to address anything that can be addressed in the chip. You can't read it, so you can't really find out how many bits wide it is without reading the manual. Uh, memory operations initiated through B, both fetch and store, are simple uses of the address. The address is not capable of being incremented when B is used as the address source. Anyway, the addresses for memory operations must come from one of these three sources. The results of a memory read, they go to the instruction register from which the individual slots will be extracted and executed, or it may go into the T register, which is the top of the data stack. To store into memory, the data must come from the top of the data stack. Again, the lack of selection here, the few options, minimize the number of decisions that have to be made during decoding of instructions and execution of them. Those things save time, those things save energy.